Hey, what's up everybody? It's DJ Alex Brown here to review the Shed's 160 watt three-in-one LED moving headlight. I'm super excited to share this review today, so please stick with me in this video as we're gonna go very in-depth looking at this product. In just a moment, we'll get into actually looking at this moving light and what it can do. We'll talk about the cost of this light, the features that it includes, and do a little bit of a market comparison with other features and things that are available. We'll be going very in-depth today if you want to cut to just the short version, um, I will give you a timestamp at the end of the video that you can skip to so that you can just go straight to that. Or if you wanna skip straight to uh, looking at the light, I'll give you a timestamp for that as well. But to give you guys a very quick lowdown, if you just want to know a little bit about this light, um, you can obviously check out the Sheds website and the proper way to say it is Sheds. Basically just take the second H out. My general opinion on this light is it is a lot, a lot of light for a very good price. Um, and I'll talk about a comparison of the first set of moving heads that I got. Um, but basically on a per light basis, this light is about the same cost as what I paid about 10 years ago for my first moving head light. So obviously the technology has come a long way, but I think it's a very attractive price. Um, especially, we'll talk about this later in the video, um, the kind of features that it comes with and the ability to just buy multiple lights, I think is very important. So also for those of you who are using the ADJ uh, WMX1 or the uh, Wolfmix W1, they are the exact same thing. We have a review out for that if you wanna go check it out, but I've had some people on the channel mention that they've had trouble with sheds, moving heads, um, getting them programmed into the WMX1. Um, because there's no profiles set. Um, and there are in fact some profiles and I will talk about my experience with that uh, towards the end of the video also. So I'll leave a timestamp for that here. But also um, if you use any sort of intelligent DMX controller that relies on profiles, you'll wanna stick around until that part of the video. Uh, without further ado, let's get right into taking a look actually at the features on this light. I'm gonna move over here and we'll uh, unbox the light and put it up on a totem so that we can take a better look at it. All right, everyone, so here's the box this came in now. Um, Sheds sent me this light and asked me to do a review on it. And one of my policies with review videos is that I'm always going to give you my honest feedback about a light. Uh, so we'll talk about the pros and cons as we get through this video. First thing I'm seeing on the box is 90 to 240 volt, 50 to 60 Hertz. So this light appears straight off the box to have a switching power supply. Now, if we open this box up, this is a single light in a single box. So if we open up the box, first things we're gonna pull out are cables. Now, um, this light uh, does use a power con input that's fairly common nowadays. Um, and it does actually come with a short DMX cable. We have the two mounting brackets, if I can get the other one out of here. I will show you in a minute, but these are the uh, very similar Omega style uh, quick connect mounting brackets that you'd see on most professional grade moving heads nowadays. You can see the light in here, but I'm just gonna pull it out and we'll, we'll cut that in. Okay, so right off the bat, before I actually take the packaging off of this light, you can see it does come in this white um, expanded foam, uh, which is typical of any lights. Uh, this is very good shipping material. I'm glad to see that it's shipped very well and that there was no shortcuts taking on the shipping um, because it is a pretty good size light. I mean, for a 160 watt moving head, you expect some sizability to it. And with all the features that we're gonna talk about in a moment, uh, you'll see why this does need to be a good sized light. Now, before we get into actually talking about the features of this light and actually really diving into it, I want to mention how quickly this light came in. Also, uh, this was sent to me from a United States based warehouse, um, which it came in, I think, a day or two after it was shipped. It was actually very, very fast. We'll talk about the spot because it is somewhat of a hybrid light that goes back to that three in one. Very hard to see, but right here you can see your little sheds label there and of course we have a typical display uh, for you know controlling the light you do have some fins here 
some openings on the back, and obviously you have this big lens on the front. This lens, from my experience, appears to just be protective to make sure you can't stick your hands in and mess with anything. Additionally, you'll see there's a bunch of screws around here. Um, I did ask Sheds if the Gobos were replaceable in this light, and they said yes, as long as you have a little bit of experience replacing Gobos and you're comfortable taking the light apart. So you do actually need to unscrew the head of the light to open it up and replace Gobos. If you're a wedding DJ or something and you're thinking that, um, you know, you might want to use this as a light for monogram projections or something and focus in and out on the Gobo, I think that's a great use for it. But do just be aware that you would have to take the head apart to put the Gobo into the light. Um, so it's not going to be something that you'd be able to just slip a slide in like you would with a proper profile light. Now, I did mention the uh, brackets. It does require two brackets, which would mean that it would require two clamps. Would go right under the light, and then you fix your clamps onto here. Now, I'd like to make a quick mention of something. There is a lot of clearance under these clamps, which I actually like. I've had trouble with other moving headlights that I recently purchased where there's not really enough clearance and I need to swap the bolts out on my clamps. Also, I very much like that it takes two clamps because a light, anything bigger than like a pocket spot or something, really, in my opinion, should have two clamping points. It just to be professional and to be properly secured, um, I think it should have two clamping points and it makes me feel a lot better if it has two clamping points. Now, before we get to plugging this light in, let's flip this around and take a look at the back. On this light, I am very happy to see a couple of things. First of all, a on-off switch. Oh my God, lighting manufacturers, how hard is it to put an on and off switch on your light? Um, obviously with on and off switches, there is the unfortunate downside that you could potentially accidentally hit this off if someone touches it. But I think in most professional use scenarios, um, especially if you're using this in an installation or something where it might need to be turned on and off a lot, you don't want to have to unplug it or put it into a switched outlet. Very easily turn this light. You have an accessible fuse right here. That's what this big thing is sticking out which you're gonna see on most lights. And then you have your PowerCon input and output. You have your DMX input and output. Now, this is a fairly compact base for this size of light and head. As you can see, the base is very small. And uh, I'm very happy to see that there are both PowerCon in and out and DMX in and out. It is worth noting that these are three pin DMX, which is generally going to be the standard. Uh, the zoom range is 10 to 20 degrees, so not super wide. It's not a massive zoom light. Key thing here with this wire, this is a, looks to be probably about a four, maybe five. I'm also going to say I don't necessarily care that it comes with the DMX cable uh, because in my personal use, I need a boatload of DMX cables anyway, so I carry a bunch on me. If you are just getting into lighting, it's probably a very nice feature that this comes with a DMX cable. As we look at the actual features of this light, I will talk as we go through the DMX about the different functions of this light, including prisms, colors, gobo wheels, rotation, all those sorts of things. So I am just working off of my ADJ Dummy MX1 here. Um, I did have to reach out to uh, Wolfmix to have a profile set up for this light, and I did go through before and notate um, some little details that were helpful in getting the profile set up. So um, if you do buy one of these lights, some sheds moving heads they have in the profiles already and some they need to set up. It didn't cost me anything and they had it done within a couple of hours of me asking them to do it. I do apologize that we're going with vertical video for this, but I want you to be able to see what this light is doing on the ceiling. Very bright, it is a sunny day outside and you can see this light very clearly. Now, one of my first concerns with any, in a second here, you're gonna hear my first downside on this light, and it's really the only downside um, that I wanna mention, and it's gonna make it a little hard for you guys to hear me. Just a couple seconds after I turn this LED on full power, the fan is gonna kick on to high, 
like that. And it is a little bit loud. So um, I don't know if I would use this during a wedding uh, reception, uh, during dinner or something, because as people are giving toasts, um, it might be hard to hear them. If you're running two of these, it's gonna get a little bit loud. The good news is, is that fan is intelligent. So it will be off if LED is staying cool enough. So what I'm first gonna do is turn this on, come into home and just dim it down a bit. Um, so hopefully we can keep that fan off. Now the first channel is going to be the dimmer. So zero to 255 or zero to 100. Again, plenty of brightness on this light. Um, you would probably have to use this at a, uh, a lower brightness than <laughs> it's capable of uh, because it's a very bright light. Uh, the second channel is the shutter. So this does have a strobe on the shutter and it has actually a very attractive strobe gradient. After that, we have pan. Like I mentioned, this does have 540 degrees of pan and it's a pretty good speed for the size moving head it is. It's, it's very fast compared to what I've seen for a moving head the size. Relatively center, same thing with the tilt. It can go at a slight downwards angle. Now, the only thing is I'm not sure if it's a full 270 degrees of tilt. So 180 degrees would be flat it maybe goes down to five or 10 degrees lower. So it's maybe like a 210 tilt in reality. Just be aware that you're not gonna get this light super low if it's on a totem. I could probably force it down, but I'm not gonna do that. Color wheel, here we go. So you can see I have a gobo selected right now. I'm just gonna turn that off. But you can go through the color wheel, see all the different colors. I don't need to go through every color with you guys. But uh, these colors are very nice and sharp. They're very even and very vibrant. So I'm glad to see that there is a good quality color wheel in here. But these colors are super smooth. Go to the first gobo wheel. There's actually two gobo wheels in this light. So uh, we can just go through the gobos quick. I'm not gonna show you every single one. You can see this is also a little bit of out of focus. Um, which I will uh, bring in in just a minute. Now these are for steel. However, there are some glass ones, which is on the next gobo wheel. Okay, so it's probably hard to see just because we're at a very short focal length here. Um, this is actually, I believe, less than the recommended minimum focal distance. I believe it's around eight feet on this light. So here's just some of the glass gobos. Uh, that one looks like it's a steel. That looks like it's steel also. Very cool to have some glass gobos installed though. That's actually worth, uh, to me, some money. Um, glass gobos are not cheap. Even for a stock gobo, very cool to have. Um, this is sort of like a snowflake and this is what I'm gonna stick with. Uh, you can rotate the second gobo wheel. Um, so you can individually rotate, let's see, let's say you have a monogram uh, that you need to just adjust it a little bit. Uh, this is something I wish I had on a profile light because uh, being able to just adjust it that easily would be so nice. I spend so much time adjusting my monograms. So that is a really cool feature. And then you can also um, have it just spin and you can have it spin at different speeds so this is a little bit slower here. Very, very cool feature. Next, one of the most exciting features for me is the prism. I have wanted a moving headlight with a prism for so long. This is one of the things that makes me giddy about this light. It is a six facet circular prism. Uh, if you turn the prism off, Sometimes you can see a little ghosting around the gobo where light is getting through the light. Now, obviously also you can turn the light up when you use the prism. Again, you may have that fan kick in if you do that. Now, this is very cool if you're maybe doing some lighting. Uh, you can add your gobo rotation. Say you're doing some Christmas lighting or something. This is a very cool effect right here. Just making these gobos spin with the prism, super cool, um, great for production applications. And then you have your prism rotation. So you can rotate the prism the same way as the gobo and just go to a defined amount, or you can make it turn clockwise and counterclockwise at different speeds. So very cool on that, very nice feature is the frost filter. 
So uh, as you can see, it does adjust the zoom and focus. If you turn the frost on, it actually turns this light almost into a wash light, which I think is super cool um, that you can have this frost filter and turn it into a wash light. This is a very cool thing for me. You do lose some brightness doing this and then you need to turn the LED up and then that fan kicks on. So that is an unfortunate downside, but very cool to have that, uh, that frost filter. And again, you have full zoom control from that 10 to 20 degrees. Um, and then you have your focus control also. Again, these things are very good for either custom monograms or stage lighting, spotlighting, um, any sort of thing with gobos. Very important features to have zoom and focus, DMX controllable. Fine pan and fine tilt. And then you have two um, other channels geared out. So uh, these are macros. I'm surprised that when they put this in, they didn't actually uh, put it in correctly, but you do have macro control on this. So uh, I can set it to sound mode. Very cool feature, sound mode for the mobile DJ. Not something you usually find on professional lights, but uh, if you're a mobile DJ, which I think is what this is mostly geared to, very nice to have a sound mode. Other function is actually just the ability to reset the light from DMX, which is actually a very cool little feature and something that you would commonly see on a very professional and high-end light. Um, so a lot of cool features on this light, certainly has the brightness to light up a room uh, with just two of these, you can get a lot of power out of them. All right, so guys, this light next to me sheds 160 watt three in one moving head. I just pulled this up on their website to give you guys the exact price. Currently, this is just shy of $330 and that includes free shipping from the United States. So you can expect to get that in a couple of days. Now, let me give you a quick comparison and reference. This light here, for reference, is in an opaca spot. This cost me $300 back in probably 2014. So obviously we've come a long way. Um, now the elephant in the room is that this is a Chinese manufactured light, um, which the reality is, is that any light you're purchasing nowadays is a Chinese manufactured light. This light has so many features of pro moving heads that are probably for the most part around $1,000 plus. And this is a fraction of that. This is an absolutely awesome light if you are just getting into DJing or lighting or just getting into moving heads. If you're just getting started out, this is an awesome, awesome light. Honestly, I think it's an awesome light for me. The only one downside that I have about this light is what I mentioned earlier in the video, which is the fan that comes on uh, when the LED is running at a higher power. Now, obviously there is a way to avoid that. Otherwise, this is a really nice light. Like this is a, like, it's, it's really nice guys. Like really nice. Now here's the other thing I wanna point out about this light. Obviously we just went through all the features, so I'm not gonna repeat them, but they actually sell a package with a case and two of these lights under a thousand dollars two of these lights and a road case you can't beat that now the other thing i want to mention is that i've seen a trend lately in the dj industry a lot of the companies have been using chinese made moving heads a lot of people are ditching the american manufacturers um, and honestly my experience with the american manufacturers lately has not been that great um, I've had plenty of quality issues with lights. If you're looking for a light in this size, definitely take a look at this. Um, this is a really awesome light with a lot of features. Well, well worth the $330 price tag. Power in and out, DMX. Sheds also has out a, I think it's a 275 watt LED. It has a five facet linear prism. I really want to see that light. I really want to get my hands on it because uh, this, I'm a sucker for a linear prism and I'm gonna show you a video as to why because of what you can do with them. For most people's application, um, and they have a couple different lights in this series, I'm hoping that Sheds will be happy with this video and want me to do more reviews of more of their products because I'm very impressed by this little. And another thing to think about is the use that you'll be using this light for. So um, if you're a DJ doing weddings, 
you know, you're going to want to think about that fan. Pretty much any other application, DJ events, school dances, Sweet Sixteens, uh, if you're doing production lighting, um, this is going to be a great light for you. And I think for the most part, nowadays, it's more important that you can have multiples of lights than very expensive lights. So I think this light makes that very attainable for most people because you can very easily buy four or eight of these. What would I give this as a star rating? Probably about a 4.8 out of five. I just have to take a little bit off for that fan. But at the same time, this is a very, very affordable light. Definitely an awesome light. It's a really cool light. Um, so with that, I'm going to wrap this video up. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, I have a bunch of new content coming out very soon as we go into the off season here in Rhode Island. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you uh, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. And let me know in the comments if you have some of these sheds lights or if you're planning to buy any after watching this video. Once again, everybody, thank you so much for watching. I'm DJ Alex Brown. That's going to wrap this one up. Until next time, peace.